Welcome to the Hot Mic SE. This is an untold dark side of Praven Gordon. Praven Gordon must never have a stretchful moment. He, like Churchill, must have a story told with all the blood and gore they both left in their wake. There was a mass. Mm -mm. Bengal, Dresden, and likewise Praven left a similar trail of destruction in South Africa. To go from Mandela to Zuma was a tragedy. He was overthrown by Tony Mandela, Praven Gordon, civil society, press, judiciary. Tang got to real one. I said to him, your problems are A and C. The colony, Robin Renwick, sings his praises along with Tony Mandela for saving South Africa from state capture. Imagine Rachel or Bowen allowing a concept like state capture to be allowed in the U.S. government. They earn billions from the state. Yet in South Africa, where clearly we have issues with the English language, our media judiciary ran with it, despite it being completely unheard of and nonsensical. But that's Praven. Praven was made Minister of Public Enterprises and more especially ESCOM, which he subsequently collapsed. He proposed unbundling, fired and hired CEOs, got rid of the chief procurement officer and was basically running the utility like his uncle's stock shop. Unparalleled load shedding ensued as soon as he took over in 2018. He fired the CEO and then set about destroying ESCO. South Africa suffered the worst load shedding in history under Praven. In fact, load shedding only entered towards the 2024 election when Praven retired. Is this a coincidence? I think not. He destroyed ESCOM. Same with Transnet because he was the de facto board and executive running two state-owned entities like his uncle's stock shop. People died under load shedding. Ventilators stopped working. Accidents happened when traffic lights didn't work. The already stagnant economy suffered a devastating blow but Praven didn't bother. Unbundling or privatization was on the cards. Needles to say his daughter's business interest in Kalulu and FFS refiners had nothing to do with diesel Eskom was buying, but who knows really, I don't. Recall when his supposed qualifications were questioned publicly and someone from KwaZulu Natal University issued a letter saying he had won, only to be fired the next day. Weird, right? When was he actually a pharmacist? Previn was integral to Cyril's rise to the ANC presidency. Some may say an active fundraiser. That relationship was always cute, as an example when the ANC resolved to move ESCOM to Greater Mantashi. Previn convinced Cyril not to do so. Previn was more important than an entire ANC policy conference, apparently. Interestingly, hashtag Tuma Mina Media Group, the notorious WhatsApp for media, to disseminate surreal's messaging to the media was run by Previn's people, Tasnim from GCRS and Adrian Lucky from SARS. Previn's people were managing surreal's campaign to some extent. Then there were the rock unit accusations. Previn was accused of spying on people using the resources of the SARS. Naturally, books and commissions disproved this. Yet when Andre the Ruta claimed he was being spied on, Nobody in the media could remember who was accused of running the rock unit. Nobody in our media. Then there is his stint as an author. For some reason, he was at a book signing for my president's keeper. Why was he signing someone else's book? Surely someone thought this was strange. As with Andre, CEO after CEO left the entities he was running into the ground. SAAA, Transnet, ESCOM, etc. etc. It got so bad. He didn't release the annual financials for SAA for years. Then he tried to sell SAA for 51,000 rand. The question remains, how did nobody in the ANC and NEC stop this monster? If he really did run the rock unit, he would have tons of dirt on these guys one would imagine. Must be the arrogance then. Remember when he mocked ANN7 journalists? Anyone else would have been lectured to and charged by any number of NGOs and outers for free speech and governance, but not Praven. Praven magically absolved himself from anything and everything. There's a B, B, and D, a tenders at SARS that run into billions, but he was never charged. 
unlike the MEC for Economic Development in KwaZulu Natal, who was charged for an arms deal signed by Trevor Manuel and Tabo Mbeki. Previn was defended by Natasha Manzoni in Parliament. She's from the DA, yet she defended Previn while his own party ignored him. One might just get the impression he was working for someone else. Where's his money? The EFF claimed it was in Canada, but that would be easy to trace. Someone as arrogant as Previn wouldn't do that. Previn was a monster. Any attempts to paint an alternative picture is to make Churchill a war hero instead of a mass mm -mm, psychopath. Remember everyone who died during unnecessary load shedding because he wanted to sell ESCOM. As for me, I don't wish Previn Gordon to rest in peace. Thank you all for watching and please don't forget to kindly drop your comments, drop a like and please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you.